Hey everybody, it's me, Rob Legata from Modern Tribe. Today's Tuesday, April 16th, and I'm going to keep showcasing, you guessed it, the upcoming Events Calendar and Events Calendar Pro 3.0 release. Today I'm going to look at actually an add-on we're releasing alongside those builds. It's our new filters panel, and the reason I'm doing it in a 3.0 preview video is we really built this filters panel for the 3.0 release. It's coming out the same day that 3.0 builds are coming out, and it's been tested and built entirely running against the 3.0 code so that we can release it and give it to users who want to make the most of the filtering options with this new plugin. We haven't had it out there for the 2.0 builds, so you're not going to get it if you're using 2.0.11 or anything earlier. But if you upgrade to 3.0, know that you will have this available at your disposal as well. Keep in mind, though, it is a paid plugin. It's not something that's free, and it's not something that is going to come bundled. You will need to buy it separately, but you can run it alongside either the Core Events Calendar or the Paid Events Calendar Pro. Whichever version you're using, you will have the option to get the Filters Panel if you want it. I've already activated the Filters Panel. That's what we're looking at at my site here. And I want to preface with a few points. One, I'm going to do the majority of my testing here in month view. The filter options do apply across the board to all the different views you have, but it wouldn't really make much sense for me to test all those and walk you through all of them because the functionality is the same. So we're going to use month view. Just know that you will be able to use it on any of the other views. Please also keep in mind that this is not a finished product. The filters panel isn't done yet. It's close, we're getting there, but the aesthetics might change, the functionality might change a little bit. So don't get too married to what you see here because while, like I said, the functionality is pretty much gonna be the same, some aesthetics might change a bit. There might be a couple function tweaks here and there. So just consider that. This is a beta and you should treat it as such. Here I've got the filters panel enabled and you'll see it made my calendar fairly thin. If I get rid of it, you'll see it makes the calendar full width and vice versa. And when I'm looking at it, what it allows me to do is narrow my results. I can narrow by event category. I can pick from the drop down here to any of these options. And look, since I have the live Ajax filtering, I don't have to press submit or anything. The second I make a selection here, it's going to take effect. Check out what happened when I hit health and wellness. Narrowed down quite a few events out of the picture, and it's only showing me the events that probably would be related to health and wellness, the drop-in free clinic and yoga in the park. When I bump it back up to select, it brings back the rest of my events. And then we can look at the cost filter. Cost filter allows me to say, okay, what cost range do I want to see events from? Right now it's showing me events from $0, which is my cheapest event in the system, to $25, which is my most expensive event in the system. If I want to pull this and drag it up a bit, let's say I put it up to 14 bucks here, it drops everything except Great Fest 2013. What this is telling me is that, okay, the only event that is between $14 and $25 is this Great Fest 2013. Everything else is under $14. I can also, of course, pull from the other side, narrow between zero and whatever I wish. Either way, it gives me maximum combinations and maximum ability to select whatever combination I wish from the cost filter here. Let's go down to venues. Venues are, of course, where your events take place. It is showing me my five most used venues right off the bat here. These are the ones that have the most events associated with them, and as people use events, or excuse me, use venues more or less, those will rise or fall in the rankings here. It's always going to show the five most popular, regardless of what those are, and it will fluidly, naturally, automatically, without you having to do anything, reflect on the front end. If people don't want to reflect, uh, or excuse me, filter down to just see one of the top five venues, fine, they have this select more option here. They can pick from the drop down one of the existing names, or they can begin to type and see whatever comes up to match their selections there. The time filter, well, before we move on to the time filter, why don't I just show you what the venue filter does? Notice I check a box, it immediately takes effect. If I want to check multiple boxes, I need to wait for one to trigger before hitting the other. And again, to get back to square one where I started from, just wipe all my selections. Time is allowing me to filter down by specific time. I could see just the all-day events, just the morning events, just the afternoon events, just the evening events, just the night events, etc. By this point, you should understand what it's going to do. When I check the box, it is naturally going to filter down and only show me all-day events. Uncheck it, bring them back. You're probably getting a feel for how this works by now. Day, same thing, just allows me to select the day or days that I want to see events from. Let's say Wednesday everything but the Wednesday events and those that in this case carried from Wednesday forward are hidden. Notice that Great Fest is showing here. The reason it is showing, even though it also takes place on Thursday and Friday, is that this is a three-day event. It's like a festival. 
If you are looking for events that are taking place on, say, Wednesdays, if a festival takes place Wednesday to Friday, you want to know about that. And that's why you're getting these pulled in here. So don't expect that just by filtering to show a specific day, you are only going to see the events in the row or the column for that day. Because if you have multi-day events, it's still going to pull those in as well. Let's wipe it, go back to square one. And then we get down into the organizers option. Again, same thing. It uses the five most popular. If there are more that you want to select from down below, you absolutely can. If you've made a bunch of selections and just want to wipe them without having to go through and do it manually, you have this reset all filters option at the bottom here. Hit it. When you're done, it wipes them. One thing you should also notice, look at how the URL bar is modified as you make these changes. It is actually adjusting the URL bar. So if you have a filter or you have a set of filters you want to apply and you want to share that with somebody else, you want to say, hey, look at all the events that we could go to because they're within this price range, they're at this venue, etc. You could do that. When I hit Golden Gate Park as the venue, note what it does. When I select a category, note what it does on top of that. It's continually building me a URL that I can use to share that matches my criteria. So people are not going to have to, or the people I'm sharing with, are not going to have to come in and set this up themselves. One more thing to keep in mind, let's go look at the back end because there are a couple settings related to the filters panel that you should check out. Once you've activated it, you'll see there is a filters tab here in the settings. And it allows you to select what filters you want enabled or disabled. Notice I disabled tags from the front end, largely because that's not finished yet, we're still working on it, but also just so you can see that you can have whatever you want hidden or available on the front end at any given time. If I say I really only want my users to be able to filter by category, day, and time. All right, well then I can set this option and then I can drag and drop them in this middle column to see whichever ones I want. Let's say I want to lead off with time, go into day after that, have events categories the last one. When I go back and refresh the front end, the filters panel is going to look like what we just configured there on the back end, time, day, and category. It's also cool to note that you can expand these, you can relabel them as you want, and on some of them, you can select whether or not you want it to be a drop down or a multi select. Remember, the, the category was a drop down. I got to pick one that I could filter from on the front end when we were looking at it a minute ago. But if I change this to the multi select, save, go back and refresh the front end, you can probably guess what's going to happen. It does the same thing for the category that it did for the day, for the time, for the venue, for the organizer, etc. Anything that it's a drop down or that's set as a multi select, just keep in mind that you can come back here and you can set it to the other option at any time. One last thing to note, you didn't see the distance filter on there when we were just reviewing, even though the distance filter was enabled. There's a reason for that. Let's go back and look at the front end with it enabled. Come back, set us so we're just on the main slash events page with no filters in place. And we're not seeing distance because nothing has been entered into the events bar in the location field. If I type in a city like Oakland where I live, find events from there. Now when I scroll down, distance appears, and it gives me the option to select anywhere from 5 miles to 250 miles. The reason distance doesn't show is because a near location has never been entered. Once that location is entered, you're all set. Generally, the filters panel integrates nicely and interacts nicely with the events bar up top here. I've already covered that in separate screencasts in the events bar itself, so I didn't want to go into it now, but know that once you use it, you'll be able to combine the filtering options down here with some of the options up here as you see fit. And remember, those do apply across the board to any views that you want. Hope this helps. Hope this gave you a preview of the filters panel. I'm looking forward to getting it out there because I think you guys are really going to like it. Hopefully we'll have a beta for it later on, a second round beta. And if you're interested, certainly shoot me an email, pro at tri.be. And thank you for watching. I'll have another video, not sure what on yet, but later this week.